Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm a part-time seller on eBay and just recently Amazon. Tonight, I wanna take you guys through um, the process of me creating a title on a couple of listings, uh, going through the item specifics, just show you how I have my store set up in, in regards to uh, categories and things like that. Um, the description, all of that and how it ties in and how I believe that it works in the algorithm and getting your listings to show up. I am someone who does not really promote my listings that much. Um, I show you some stats on the, um, the impressions my store gets and the, the click-through rate and the sales conversion. I, I discuss all of that and whether you're a seasoned eBay seller or if you're somebody who's new if I could just teach you one thing tonight, that means the world to me. It really does. Just comment below and let me know if there's anything that you've learned or if you see that I can do something different, teach me. You know, just just let me know because that's that's what we're here for is to um, just teach each other and learn together and, and go through this reselling journey, just uh, supporting each other and, and helping each other reach our goals. So leave comments, likes, if you are, um, you know, if, if none of this is new to you, the way you could support me is by maybe directing some people that you know that watch your channel or that you know in your life that are also resellers that make, maybe could benefit from watching it. Um, just direct them to my video. Um, I'm, I'm a teacher and a coach at heart. And even with reselling, um, I'm always looking for ways to teach people and, and just try to help other people better their life. So I appreciate you and I hope you enjoy this content. All right, guys, before I walk through a couple of items that I'm going to list, um, I just I have a couple of tabs here I want you to look at real quick. And this is in a very small sample size from June 25th to September 22nd. Um, you can see that I have 1.3 million impressions. And I try to get, get this number as high as possible with uh, trying to uh, get as many items in my store as possible. And uh, I'm currently in trying to increase the number of my items. I'm having trouble with getting up and over a thousand and staying over a thousand, which is a good problem um, uh, because that means I'm selling at a decent rate. But I try to go deep with the number of items I have and I also try to go broad with um, not just the um, type of items I have in my store, but like with clothing, I try to go broad with um, the, not just the top name brands, but recognizable brands and, um, and just little odd and end type shirts that I find that, um, that are just unique and not necessarily name brand. It can just be generic, but it could be colorful or it could be very eccentric. Um, I just like going deep with those, or I mean, going broad with those items to get eyes in my store. And so that's what I'm focusing on when I say that I'm trying to get this number up. Um, the click, the average click through rate, I range usually between 0.6% and I've seen it as high as 1.1%. And then my sales conversion rate at 4.2%, um, to give you an, an idea the, in e-commerce, the average, um, conversion rate is around two to 3%. And on eBay, people will consider it average to be, uh, between two and 5%. So uh, I've seen this number as high, you know, in the same time period, I've seen this number as high as 6.1% before. Um, but I, I typically stay anywhere uh, between like 3.6 upwards to uh, about 4.5, 4.6, somewhere around in there. And that's, uh, I think, really good for me considering the number of used items that I've, you know, uh, put in my store, specific, specifically clothing items. And... I don't know how this compares to other sellers with their clothing items. It's just that, um, you know, I, I just know these numbers um, have been decent for me because they have turned into a, a pretty good amount of sales over the last six years when when I'm staying um, around this 4% conversion rate. And another thing I want to show you is the return rate. And this number actually surprised me here that I had 24, this is over the last year, you can see 1,148 transactions. Um, this number here really surprised me. If you had asked me how many returns I've had with clothing, I've, I, I, in fact, I think I've said in a couple of my videos, and, I, and I've, 
you know, and I spoke incorrectly, uh, I would have said less than five probably because it does not feel like 24. I think it's just because they've been really spread out. And a number of these have actually, you know, when I reviewed this, come during COVID, and you may have heard me in one of my videos talk about the number of new buyers that have shown up during during COVID. And a lot of them haven't really been terrible complaints. Um, you know, item not described, it's been just sizing issues. I can list the sizes and then give the measurements. And sometimes, um, you know, it just don't fit their body too well. And I can, I can remember some of these being uh, back in um, May and June and July, you know, people just cl uh, claiming some of the athletic gear just didn't fit too well. Um, and I had a few items not described. I did have one that I do remember. Uh, I, I described it as new without tags, and he said it definitely was not new without tags, and he was correct. Uh, I just made a mistake in placing that item in the wrong pile. And before I list, I tend to separate the new with tags, and then in my used um or not just my used items, but my items without tags that I pick up in thrift stores and yard sales. Uh, I try to determine which ones are new with without tags, you know, that haven't been worn, and uh, and I separate those compared to the other used items. Um, and I think I accidentally put a shirt in the wrong pile, and you know, and he called me out on it with the laundry tag having somewhere, and he was correct. Uh, it's just, I'm pretty sure I just put that shirt in the wrong pile because I, I'm sure I noticed that it was a used item. Um, and listing new without tags is, um, is very important to me because I love getting that word new in my listings. And um, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute when I, when I list a couple of these items. Okay, so the uh, first item I have that I'm going to list, Speedo swim trunks that are new with tags. And um, the way I, I do this auction title, specifically with swim trunks, I try to include uh, as many of the keywords as I can um, that I think people will be searching. So I, I wanna optimize the title and you'll see a common theme even with these swim trunks compared to the shirt that I list here in a minute. You'll, you'll see uh, the kind of flow that I have when I, um, when I list or when I make these titles. So we're gonna put Speedo Men's Swim Trunks. Uh, let's see, Adult XL Swimming Shorts, Black, New, WT, and then finish with New. Let's get started here. All right. Okay, so what you see here uh, that I have 17 characters left and uh, some of you may think, well, I've got 17 more characters to work with. I need to jam in here what I can and uh, maximize the number of characters when actually that does not work for me. Um, I'm going to end it here because I could throw in words like board shorts, but I would be wrong. These are not board shorts. Swim trunks have the, the inner mesh lining and board shorts do not. Board shorts are, you know, just have the shell and um, that it would be incorrect. You know, I, I don't want to spam and jam words in here that, that are incorrect. Um, I could throw in like the length, um, or, or, I mean the inseam, um, you know, you, you could, you could do that in the title, but it's really irrelevant because that's not going to be a search term. If you look at what I have here, I have the, uh, the name brand. Um, I have that. I like to always put, um, you know, men's, women's or, or boys, girls next. And then I want to go directly identify exactly what the clothing item is followed by the size and then I like to follow with what could possibly 
possibly be a, a secondary cl uh, clothing item search term before I go into the color. And then I wanna make sure obviously that I get the word new in there. And um, if these shorts were deemed to be new without tags, of course this would be NWOT. If it was an item where I ran out of search terms, for example, I couldn't get the word new in here, uh, meaning that I had to choose between the most relevant um, or which would be the most relevant term, obviously new would override NWT because new is an extremely searchable term or popular searchable term and I want that in the title over NWT. And um, the same goes if I had to choose between including swimming or swim, swim would be chosen more over swimming. So that would be the, you know, I would, I would cut down on swimming. So what I do is I, I type my title and then if everything doesn't fit in there, of all the things that I don't fit, when I go to scale back, I, um, I determine which are the most relevant uh, words to be included in the title and I trim it that way. And uh, some of that in the beginning when I was, when I was very new to this involved me just kind of researching and seeing what it is that buyers wanted uh, or were searching when they would um, type into the search bar on eBay and now I don't have to do that. I kind of have an, a, a good grasp on it and it allows me to develop these titles quickly. So moving from here, I go down to my store categories or I've got to update, you know, just a few things. But if you're not categorizing your store, I suggest you do that because I believe the algorithm likes when you have categories within your store and I believe it likes when your titles match up with, um, obviously the um, the categories that eBay has you to choose, but then also match up in your store. And as you can see here, I have um, men's swimwear because I sell a lot of men's swim trunks. So I just went ahead and created a category about a year ago for swimwear and UPC code. I'll enter that in a minute. Condition is new with tags. Um, down here in item specifics, you can see it's already automatically put some of the required in there. That's that's another good sign too when you're developing your title. If you go down and you see the required item specifics have already been selected, then that means you, you've got a pretty good start or a pretty good grasp on um, your title. Um, additional, uh, you know, the swim trunks here don't have a whole lot of additional additional. Um, uh, item specifics. So um, the next item, the shirt that I list here in a minute, you'll see more additional item specifics. And I've tried to always fill out as many of those as possible. Some of them sometimes can, can't be relevant. And then other times I can actually make some that are not relevant. I can kind of hack a little bit and make them relevant by, uh, for example, it may say, um, you know, type like on a button shirt when I've already identified it maybe in another category or uh, another item specific part that had me select like button front or button up or something like that. Um, so um, I may just throw the word button in there. Something that's, you know, it's not spamming. It's still relevant to what the, the, um, the shirt actually is. And so I want to keep doing what I feel like has been working. Now for the description, I always like to use um, two sentences and be done if I can. And some people just copy the title and then place it back in there. But I don't like I don't like to do that. I like to type it out, you know, and keep it simple. Speedo men's swim trunks are new with tags. And then on this next line here, I'm going to list the measurements. And um, so I'll, I'll measure the shorts from top to bottom. I'll put that here and then I'll measure the inseam. When I am finished, I will copy all of this and then go back up and, oh wait, I forgot it's a new with tags item. Um, it's only for used items that you can put further on the, uh, on the description. So, uh, so I'll just leave this here, but I'll, I'll put the, I will put the measurements 
below the sentence saying that it's new with tags, and then I stop there. I don't try to add all this fluff trying to sell the item. People already know what they're looking for when they go to type it into the search bar. I don't need to put additional sentences on here that these are extremely nice shorts, they're comfortable. I don't need to add all of that. People are already, they've already determined in their mind what they want. I'm gonna list these shorts actually for, make it a pretty good deal, $17.99. Uh, I always do 30 day returns, free shipping. I've got the immediate payment required. So this item will be good to go. Uh, I know it weighs eight ounces. This item will be good to go once I go back and add all the measurements and things in there. So I'm just gonna save it for now. I'll come back and finish it. The next item I'm gonna list is a Wrangler Hero men's button-up shirt, an outdoor shirt. Um, it's a flannel type shirt. So what you'll see me do here is once again, start with the brand. And then there is actually a subtype. It is a not just a Wrangler shirt, but it's Wrangler Hero. So we put that next, then we put, uh, whether it's men's or women's, so we'll say button up, long sleeve, plaid flannel, shirt medium. The main color of it is red, and it's in excellent use condition. And the little dash you see me use right there, on my auction listings, um, the little symbol at the end lets me know uh, it's it, it's it, it lets me know the um, amount that I paid for the item, and um, what I mean by that is that dash tells me that when somebody is making me an offer, or if I'm going through make or sending offers, it tells me instantly without me having to go look in my log and see how much I paid for this item, uh, the dash tells me that I paid a dollar for it. If there are two dashes, it tells me that I've um, paid a couple of dollars for it, or uh, it also indicates that if I know it's good, a Goodwill item, instead of me buying it on dollar day, I got it on half off day. Um, so if, if it's a semicolon, uh, it means that I paid less than a dollar for it. It's just, you know, I'm not specific. I don't need to know if it was 75 cents, 50 cents or whatever, but I just need to have a general idea of what it is that I pay for the item. Um, because a lot of these clothing pieces, I go for a high velocity. I sell them quickly. I turn them over quickly and it's because of the pricing and running sales and, sending offers and taking offers and it's nice to know right then and there without trying to dig through a, a notebook or sit and, and ponder on man how much did I pay for that I know instantly so these little subtle symbols uh, you know I've got about five symbols actually that uh, that mark things for me and I don't I'm not going to mention all the others it's irrelevant to what we're talking about here today but uh, you can see with this title, once again, I use that same concept, start with the brand, and this one had a subtype, so I throw that in there before I identify the sex, uh, whether it's men, women's, boys, girls, button up, long sleeve, and I start, this is where I start getting into the meat of describing the shirt, plaid, flannel, shirt, medium, red. Now, this shirt actually is red, white, and black. I'll let the pictures do the talking there. Uh, in fact, if you read any of the um, advice that eBay gives when you have a multicolored item, if there is obviously a color that sticks out, you are, or it benefits you more to um, just list the main color of that shirt. Now, if, um, you know, if I had more room, let's say it was just a Wrangler shirt that was just a polo shirt, for example, and it was multicolored, let's say it was you know red black and white i would probably have after i identified that it was a polo shirt i probably would have room to say red black and white or you know red black and white stripes or something like that um but 
otherwise, and you know, I've, I've got a lot to describe here, and I, I got everything in there that I need, but I don't need to go into detail that it's red, white, and black. I just need to put the main color, which is red, because it's more red than anything, and um, let the pictures describe the rest of it. Um, going to store categories, um, I'm going to men's casual, and I'm also going to go to men's fishing and hiking because this is considered an outdoor shirt. Here, the condition, it's pre-owned, and you can see the automatically updated item specifics. Um, it put a lot of the required in there. Now, sometimes, as you guys know with eBay, even though I have the size in there, it doesn't have it listed. Actually, it doesn't have it listed here because uh, it does read this as a button shirt, and button shirts can have a specific uh, type, um, specifically with Wrangler and other brands. They could be regular, they could be big and tall, and so that's why it all this in this case did not list it automatically so i choose medium uh all right now it gets into these are recommended you don't have to do these but these are recommended and i listened to a uh, another ebay sellers podcast who never they never mess with recommended item specifics they just see it as you know it's a hassle um, they just stick with what's required and they move on and they do sell some clothing. And I think that some of the reason that I hear them on their podcast talk about not moving as much clothing or not getting as much attention with their clothing is um, I don't think they're uh, maximizing their opportunity within the algorithm. So um, the shirt is 100% cotton. I'm just going to select cotton here. Features. Um, just one feature that I want to add, unless it gives me a chance to select it down here. It does not, it does have a pocket. Let's me select pockets there. I'll add that. And that's pretty much all I want to add as far as the features. There's nothing really fancy about this shirt. Just like most Wrangler shirts, it's basic. Uh, it's just a regular fit shirt. Um, accents, obviously it's a button shirt. Button up, neckline is collared. Closure, once again, button. Occasion, casual, vintage. It is not. I know this seems like a lot, but it, it really isn't, and I really believe that it helps. Additional character, it's the hero. It's, irre it's irrelevant, but if it gives me an opportunity to add it in there, uh, as because hero is in the title and I wanted to include it in there as well and then it will also match with the description I type here which is Wrangler hero men's button and I have not included the word outdoor so I'm going to throw it here in the title because the first few words in your uh, description I forgot how many characters up to uh, maybe a hundred or so uh, they can actually be searchable. So I'm going to put outdoor shirt in there since I haven't included it anywhere else. And in fact, um, character family, I could probably just add outdoor here and throw it in there. And um, so now I've, it's showing up a couple of times. Outdoor shirt is in excellent use condition. I've already measured it, 29 inches top to bottom and 22 pit to pit all right since it's a U shirt it gives me an opportunity for uh, the condition up here condition description I'm going to copy and paste it in there now the reason this matters and it's also the reason that I keep this to two sentences and keep it straight to the point and very basic in the description here is for mobile users. Most people are shopping on a phone and an iPad or an iPad anymore. And so these mobile devices, if you look for this item, when the title shows up in the condition description, this will show up underneath the title, or at least it used to. I actually don't know if it still does anymore. I'll be honest, I'm old school. When I shop on eBay, I still shop on my laptop 
but um, I think it still shows up under mobile. But even if it doesn't, it's just an opportunity, once again, to get these words here matched up with a, another, another entry box. And I'm just a firm believer that it all matches up in the algorithm. And I think that it's, it's part of my success. So I could be wrong. Some of y'all out there could educate me, comment, let me know what, what you think. Am I wasting my time? Am I on point? Um, I don't have the answers for everything. I'm always learning. I just know it works for me. Now, I do move through this quicker than what I'm doing now. It, it seems like a lot, but listing and including all of these items specifics, it um, if I'm doing button shirts, uh, I'll, I'll do them all at once. I like grouping things together because I, I feel like I can go quicker. Uh, I can definitely get uh, 10 items, sometimes more of these types of shirts listed within an hour with pictures and everything. Um, but, you know, that's me, you know, absolutely not wasting any time and, and, and really busting my tail and, and um, moving quickly. I'm going to price this $14.99, which is, which is reasonable. Free shipping, free returns. 10 ounces and save this draft. I just have to take the pictures and we will be good to go. I've got these two items here that I need to list uh, after I get these pictures. You guys uh, take care and as always, be rocking it out with those sales. Later.